Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and I'm at Sydenham Station and part of the new aerial concourse has opened. Let's take a look. And here it is. At the moment it's only open between platforms 3 to 6, with a white hoarding blocking off the rest of it. And the new lifts are not in use as yet, but I'm sure they will be very soon. The stairs to platforms 4 and 5 and platform 6 are on the southwest side, with the lifts being on the opposite side. So I'm going to start by walking up the platform 6 stairs. There are 42 steps in total, and they are broken up into 3 groups of 14 steps. Once at the top, you'll see the platform 6 lift entrance on the other side. Now looking back down the stairs, and you can see the glass balustrades on either side, and the canopy ceiling above it, which is clad in bronze anodized aluminium sheet panels. The aerial concourse is 5 metres wide, and when fully open it will be 65 metres long. The glass balustrades on either side of the aerial concourse are 2.4 metres high, which is beyond the height of even the tallest of people. And the views are pretty spectacular too, especially on the northeast side. The bronze canopies that cover the stairs continue into the aerial concourse and become part of the ceiling. And then continue over the lift shafts on the other side. Between the bronze canopies that are over the stairs and lifts are these much lighter coloured anodized aluminium panels. These create a nice contrast and intuitively direct passengers towards the bronze canopies that line the stairs and lifts. Lights and PA speakers have been installed towards the top of the glass balustrade supports. And here is a closer view of one of them. These are the stairs down to platforms 4 and 5, which has 43 steps. That's one more than the platform 6 stairs. Notice the lights on either side and the canopy which slopes in towards the centre of the stairwell. This is the lift for platforms 4 and 5, with the bronze canopy extending above it. Now looking back towards platform 6 and Burroughs Avenue. The stairs for platforms 2 and 3 are on the northeast side, and this is because platforms 1 and 2 have been extended on this side. So the stairs will bring passengers towards the middle part of platform 2, as well as the top of platform 3, and the lift is on the opposite side. Here is the platform 2 and 3 lift, with views of the station behind it. And now the platform 2 and 3 stairs, with the bronze canopy above it. This has 41 steps. From these stairs, you get great views of platforms 1 and 2, with the Sydney Metro tracks and platform screen doors. And you can see how these platforms continue well beyond Platform 3, which ends at this fence. Platform 2 is closed off, but you can get glimpses of it through gaps in the fencing. Here is another view of the Platform 2 and 3 stairs. When the rest of the aerial concourse comes into use, it will include the Platform 1 lift and stairs, which are on the same side as for Platforms 2 and 3. And although it's not open, you can still see quite a lot of it from the windows on either side of the hoarding. This is the rest of the concourse, and the lift to platform 1, which is coming into view now. The approach to the lift is known as a lift landing. This allows people to wait for the lift without disrupting the flow for other passengers. It also allows wheelchair passengers to turn around after exiting the lift if necessary. And you get some interesting views of the Sydney Metro tracks and platform screen doors as well. Notice that the overhead wires have not gone in as yet, I'll be talking about that soon, so keep watching. From Platform 3, you can see the stairs for Platform 1, with the bronze canopy above. The aerial concourse is supported by four square concrete piers, with one on each platform. See if you can spot some of them. And notice how the lighter coloured horizontal canopy over the concourse rests above the bronze stair and lift canopies. And the canopy over Platform 1 continues to the Railway Parade entrance, which has not yet opened. Here is the Railway Parade entrance on the map, and now the other entrance on Burroughs Avenue. Until these entrances open, the only reason to use the new concourse is to access other platforms, and there are plenty of signs to advise passengers of this. And that's why it is so quiet at the moment. The new Burroughs Avenue entrance has the shutters down, but the next train displays continue to allow passengers to view train information and then leg it to the main entrance, or perhaps use this line bike if there is a big gap in service. I reckon the railway parade entrance will open later, perhaps after the overhead wires have been installed on the Sydney Metro platforms. Now back on the aerial concourse to see some trains, starting on the northeast side.
So with Sydney CBD in the background, that was a Waratah Series 2 heading for the City Circle and a Tangara going to either Cronulla or Waterfall. That was an Oscar heading to Waterfall and another Tangara on a service to the City and Bondi Junction. Notice the existing Grey Station concourse and the Heritage buildings on platforms 4 and 5. So that's the new aerial concourse. Lots of work has also been happening at Marrickville dive site and Trades Facility South. So I'm going to cover that now. So in my last update, this on-train footage revealed that all the overhead wire structures were in place for Trains Facility South. This was on the 11th of July 2022. What's missing are the overhead wire structures for the Sydney Metro running lines as they ascend to the surface. The first overhead wire structure for the two running lines is currently here. Now on the 19th of September, and this was taken on a K-set, which had surprisingly clean and scratch-free windows. A few more components have been added to the overhead wire structures at this end, and they now look ready for the overhead wires. This gantry crane structure will soon be removed. And under that are the Sydney Metro running lines, which are a few metres below at this point. The eastern bypass track bed will be here, and the staunchions for this have been in place for a while now. Here is one of them. These cable conduits went in during the latter part of August. Vertical supports and other components have been added to the overhead wire structures over the Trains Facility South junctions. This all happened during the latter part of August as well. No changes to the overhead wire structures for the running lines, so it seems that all the work is happening within Trains Facility South at the moment. Now on the 16th of October, and masses of tangled wires are now appearing on some of the overhead wire structures. And just two weeks later on the 30th of October, and suddenly there are cantilevers and overhead wires, lots of them. And also black posts with lights on them as well. These look similar to the ones being installed at each station on the Bankstown line. The new overhead wires continue all the way to the junctions and approach tracks, and they currently finish just before the pumping station. Now on the 7th of December, and the overhead wires now continue beyond the pumping station, but only for the shunt neck track, so still no overhead wires for any of the Sydney Metro running lines. And here is where it now ends. Now viewing from the Marrickville Metro Shopping Centre, and this is how the end of the sidings looked on the 7th of December. And a close-up of the weights, pulleys and the overhead wires themselves. And this is the view in the other direction, with all the overhead catenary and black lighting posts in place. Alongside the electrification work, the remaining tracks are being added as well. This was how the track layout looked on the 11th of July, with just three bits missing. These are indicated in grey. I'll start with the infrastructure maintenance road at the junction end. On the 11th of July, the infrastructure maintenance road track continued just a little way beyond the turnout. And by the 25th of July, the concrete track slab with the grooves for the rails was visible. This is called an embedded track slab. By the 10th of August, the tracks were resting on the embedded track slab. And on the 30th of August, the rail on the right was very much in the groove. And by the 19th of September, both rails were fitting very snugly into the embedded track slab grooves. So that bit's now done. Let's take a look at the rest of it. Back to the 11th of July, and the rails were lying on top of the embedded track slab. And now on the 30th of August, and the rails disappear behind these temporary walls, but you can see them just here. I reckon they are still lying on top of the track slab. Now on the 19th of September, and you can get a glimpse of the two rails here, and these are now within the embedded track slab. This strip behind it is possibly a drainage channel. In this on-plane footage taken by Glenn on the 3rd of October, it appears that all of the infrastructure maintenance road is now in place. This is on the 30th of October, and the two embedded rails are now more visible. So the whole of the infrastructure maintenance road has now been completed. What is now left is this section of the Western Bypass Track, and a much larger section of the Eastern Bypass Track. I'll cover these both together, and also include progress on the electrification as well as the track laying. The first part of the Eastern Bypass track starts just beyond the Bedouin Road Bridge, and runs alongside the existing rail corridor to the junction where the Western Bypass track starts. Let's take a look at this first. 
On this footage from the 11th of July, stanchions for the overhead wires have been installed on this part of the eastern bypass line since October 2021, and the top ballast have been in place as well, but without any tamping, which is why the sleepers appear to be hidden. Here is the turnout where the western bypass line starts. And by the 11th of July, the sleepers for this track have been laid beyond the turnout, and these continue as this line diverges to the right. And this is how it looked from the Bedwin Road Bridge. A week later on the 17th of July and work had started to lay the rails. By the 25th of July the rails had extended to just here. And it is a little easier to see this from the Bedwin Road Bridge. By the 21st of September the rails had been extended further and in the distance you can see them bending slightly to the left. But strangely, the electrification staunchers that went in during May seem to have been replaced with these smaller vertical poles. Now looking at this from the air on the 3rd of October, and it seems that most of this track is now in place. This section, which crosses an access road, will be within an embedded track slab, and it's hard to tell if the tracks are there or not. Thanks very much to Glenn for this on-play footage, which really helped me see the new bits of track that I couldn't see from the ground. This is how it looked on the 30th of October. The new track is still waiting for the top ballast, and the road rail crossing that I pointed out in the on-play footage is here. Beyond this are a number of maintenance vehicles that are on this new track, so I think this is good enough evidence to mark this line as completed on the map. But there is a little bit more work to do on the western bypass track, and of course there's the eastern bypass track too, so let's keep going. This is now on the 22nd of November, and some new track for the eastern bypass line has been laid beyond the turnout. The new track and sleepers are currently resting on top of the bottom ballast. Meanwhile, new overhead wire staunchions have been installed on the western bypass track. The eastern bypass line currently ends here. It's then the bottom ballast only, with the rails placed on the side, and the overhead wire staunchions are already in place for this line. But it's not long before more sleepers appear, with the rails now being placed on top. At this staunchion, the new track joins the existing eastern bypass track, which was laid over a year earlier in October 2021. Now two days later on the 24th of November, and no change to either line at this end, with the eastern bypass track continuing to end just here. But the gap is now smaller, with the new rails and sleepers appearing almost immediately. Now five days later on the 29th of November, and the tamping machine has appeared, along with the top ballast that has been poured onto both tracks immediately after the turnout. And all the remaining track for the eastern bypass line has now been laid, along with the top ballast. And the tamping machine has already been over it and compacted all the new ballast into place. That's a pretty good effort in just five days. So time to mark this final piece of track as finished on my map, and this completes the track lane for the whole of Trains Facility South, but there is still a little more to show you. The northeast part of the Eastern Bypass track had been left untamped for over a year, but by the 7th of December this tamping machine had done its magic. And here is the start of the overhead wires for the Western Bypass track, which begin just before the turnout, and then continue all the way along this line and into Trains Facility South. So that brings you up to date with the Eastern and Western Bypass lines. Now it's time to reveal some strange happenings on the Sydney Metro running lines. So for over a year now, the Sydney Metro running lines have been in place on the northeast side of Sydenham Station. So I was very surprised to see this gap in the tracks on the 16th of October. From what I can tell, part of the double crossover has been removed. Anyway, by the 30th of October it was back in place. Very strange, and something that I could have easily missed if I hadn't been passing through this area during mid-October. I'm now going to show you some more on-train footage, but this time covering the whole journey from Sydenham Station to just beyond the Bedwin Road Bridge. This is the Platform 1 canopy that extends to the Railway Parade entrance, and now the Station and Services building. And now the newly extended platforms 1 and 2, which will be long enough for 8 car trains. The line on the far side is the Shuntneck track, and here is that double crossover again for the two running lines. And now for two junctions, one for Trains Facility South, and the other for the Eastern Bypass track. The Eastern Bypass line then diverges very slightly to the right to follow this fence, and you can see some of the sleepers for this track here. 
This is the last staunchion for the running lines before the tunnel portal, and I'm sure one or two more will be required. On the approach to the Barrackville dive site tunnel portal, there used to be embedded track to allow vehicles to go over it. It disappeared during October and was in this area. Notice the change to a concrete track slab as the tracks begin to descend into the tunnel portal, and also the absence of any overhead wire structures for these all important Sydney Metro tracks. This gantry crane shed that I said was going soon is refusing to budge. Just here is the tunnel portal roof, which means that the lines are now completely underground until Chatsworth dive site. And as the western and eastern bypass lines converge, you get views of the services building and the high voltage yard, which I'll cover in more detail in a moment. Now going under the Bedouin road bridge, and look out for the buffer stops that mark the end of the eastern bypass line. In this last section, I'm going to quickly show you how the buildings are progressing, starting with the high voltage or HV yard, and the services building next to it. On the 11th of July, the HV yard had a covered up component, and this building was still being constructed. By the 25th of July, it had a dark insulation panel on this side. And by the 19th of September, the covered up component had been revealed. By the 30th of October, this building had panels on all sides. And by the 7th of December, a wall had started to appear here. In July, the services building looked like this, with the dark insulation panel on the right side. They were also on the left side and the rail corridor side at this time too. And it didn't change much until the 30th of October, when the insulation panels were added to the final side of this building. This was on the 7th of December, and no visible changes. However, the lower sunlight makes the vertical stripes on the insulation panels more apparent. Next is the reception, security and fire control building. Back in July, the insulation panels were starting to appear, and by the 10th of August they were all in place. By the 30th of October, the tops of the building's sides had appeared. And by the 20th of November, this door was in place. The covered storage building was completed a few months ago, so I'm going to move on to the workshop building. On the 11th of July, the sides of the workshop building were mainly metal frames. And by the 25th of July, all the side panels have been added on the street side, but not on the railway side as yet. This happened shortly after, and by the 10th of August, all the external walls were in place, with any gaps being for future windows or doors. Which meant at this time, you could see right through the building. By the 30th of October, it was looking a lot smarter, with the vertical stripes on the sides and two of the roller shutter doors now in place. Now on the 20th of November, and grills have appeared on this side, and the third roller shutter door has been installed. The small building in front of the workshop looked like this in July. On the 19th of September, work was happening to complete the roof. And this is how it looked on the 30th of October, with the roof now in place. So two more left, the admin building and the groundwater treatment plant. This is the admin building as it looked in July. By the 30th of October, some brown mesh had been added to the outside of the balcony area. And this continues around the corner to the side that faces the workshop building. Now on the 7th of December, and the only changes I spotted were a few new holes appearing. The only noticeable change to the groundwater treatment plant was this building being coloured white. This happened during August and early September, and by the 18th of September, it was done. And here is a final look at the workshop, admin building and water treatment plant, as they were on the 7th of December. This is looking from Sydenham Pit. So that brings you bang up to date with all the work happening at Sydenham Station, Trains Facility South and Marrickville Dive Site. It really is so close to completion now. If you enjoyed this video, do give it a like, give it a thumbs up, do leave a comment or question below as well. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, and also consider joining me on Patreon. There's a link with further details in the description below. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye for now.